Hello there everyone, welcome back to another Star Wars Unlimited video. Today I have got a very, very exciting video for you. It is my first set three deck profile of many, I promise you. And this is going to be for one of my pet decks, uh, a deck that I did not get to play anywhere near as much in set two as I wanted to, um, that I am really excited for. I think it's probably not like that crazy, like that's tier one, but I think it's definitely locals playable. And it's my default locals deck for this set. And that is going to be Kylo ECL. Um, this is a deck, I, and reanimator Kylo, if you will, and I'm just so excited for this. Firstly, I get to play with my absolutely beautiful Kylo Showcase. Um, this is the only Showcase in the game I've bought, um, and it's probably... I mean, I hope it's the only one I will, but obviously set three is going to cook me. Um, but yeah, like one of my favorite characters from Star Wars. Um, showcase looks amazing, and uh, ECL. So it's Kylo Green, and the game plan uh, with this deck is essentially... Um, to use, you, you, it's it's kind of like, it's a mid-range deck, really, um, where you're trying to kill in that sort of middle of the game uh, period, you're trying to cheat out um, your leader, you're trying to get your hand size quite low um, to make your leader very, very threatening, to make your units really, really scary. There's a lot of synergies in the deck, which I'll sort of like come on to. Um, but the game plan is basically play an aggressive early game, be able to control the board against, like, con uh, against aggro decks by nature of your early deploy and the tools you have at, um, at your disposal. Um, and especially ECL, uh, and then uh, play like insane value by like ideally being two resources ahead of your opponent um, and just like playing massive things um, and just overwhelm the game that way. So um, let's talk about, uh, let's talk about it. So uh, obviously, yep, yeah, Kylo ECL, we'll put that uh, over there. Right, so we'll start off with the one costs and um, this is gonna be three copies of Force Throw, and two copies of Force Lightning. So, uh, Force Throw, um, if you've been paying attention to the format at all, um, has been like the Ray and Han too, but in particular the Ray uh, Nightmare card. Um, this card is outrageously strong, right? Like uh, this is this was a known quantity, but in Kylo it is uniquely strong, especially in set three for two reasons. Um, the first is the consistency of force targets, and this is a universal buff. We got just a load more force units in the set um, to the point where basically every deck can now fill out a curve with force units. So it's this card is going to be everywhere. <laughs> it's a, uh, I hate to break this to you, but this is going to be a really, really scary card to have to deal with. Um, and so like having access to it um, uh, is, is really, really powerful. Um, it's, in, it's insanely strong, right? It's removal. Um, and uh, the second reason, in Kylo in particular, why it's so strong is because it's self-synergistic. Um, so sometimes you would be in a... Usually you want your opponent to discard. But sometimes you would find yourself in a situation, like playing Ray, where you would need to discard your own loop to just answer a threat, right? In this deck, that's good. You are totally happy doing that. You are more than happy to just discard a, a top end unit um, to perhaps return it later. So in this deck, this card is absolutely crazy, especially with the amount of force units we have. We have and with a four cost deploy, who um, uh, newsflash is uh, force traded, right? There. So uh, yeah, card's crazy. Uh, and then we have force lightning again. We have a we're, we're in villain, so we get another ridiculous one drop um, that will let us just nuke anything basically. Um, so yeah, super super strong card, and you can pay X resources, so it just kills anything. Um, those are the one drops. Uh, in terms of the two drops, um, we have a few of them. So we got uh, three copies of Tyler's uh, Ky Tyler's Kai Kylo's Tie Silencer. Um, obviously, like yeah. Um, three copies of a new card, um, which is absolutely insane, which is Confederate Courier. So this is a two-cost, 2-1 two uh, two Separatist Vehicle Fighter with a when defeated, you create a Battle Droid token. So um, firstly, like, this is... Getting a second, like, good ship um, is nice. I mean, we did have Merc Gun ship in the previous set, so it wasn't, like, necessarily essential. But one that replaces itself when it dies to just give you that board presence to just keep pushing damage especially with the, where, where that 1-1 one, one can become a 3-1 with thanks to your leader ability, is really, really powerful. It also is a massive feels bad for your opponent to remove, um, and it synergizes with the exploit effects we have in the deck, which we'll come to, um, making it like absolutely crazy. And it's a Separatist, which is relevant for Asajj, um, which means you can ECL in an Asajj, um, and she can be absolutely nuts. So yeah, really, really strong card. Um, we've got another crazy 2-drop um, uh, with the set in Bo-Katan So this is a 2-drop two 2-3, two, 
Um, it says, while you control another Mandalorian, it gains Overwhelm and Saboteur. And while you control another Trooper, it gains plus one, plus oh. So um, obviously, if you get a clone token, a battle droid token, um, that's going to fulfill the Trooper requirement. And this is going to become 3-3. Three, three. Um, but otherwise, your opponent's just going to want to answer it. Um, now, we don't actually have that many Troopers in the deck, which is a potential issue. And I'm looking for um, options there. Um, but the curve is really, really tight, um, I think, is the difficulty at the moment. So that's the only problem. Uh, the final two drop we play, um, which I think is fine, is, is is Poggle, right? So we have lots of ways to create, uh, create droid tokens, because this card says, when you play another unit, exhaust this unit, create a battle droid token. This card is ridiculous, demands answers, um, and it can be just the most insane value engine. It's a separatist and official, like official, not relevant in this deck, but just, oh my god, what a card. Um, and uh, all of this stuff can get pulled out off of Vader. So our Vader consistency is through the roof. Um, yeah, insanely strong card. Uh, the final two cost card we play um, is technically a one cost uh, is force choke um, and this is like outrageously good removal um, our game into aggro is insane like <laughs> we have so much early game interaction such powerful two drops uh, and three drops will come to um, like the stuff you can do in the early stage of the, of the game in this deck is outrageous um, I, I just love it it's so fun um, but yeah so uh, this is just new stuff it's great uh, okay on to the three costs um, and this is a more um, limited list. So three copies of resupply, um, duh. And three copies of super laser technician, also duh. Um, I think like this, like, again, with exploit, super laser technician stonk. So set one, he was the goat. Set two, resupply was the goat. Set three, we are back to super laser technician being the goat. Being able to exploit this card, being able to make it a four one so it trades with basically everything is ridiculous. Um, just this card is stupid. It's so strong. It's so, so strong. But like, in particular, the fact you can exploit this on the turn you play it um, and ramp ahead a resource is just ridiculous um, for immediately deploying. Like, deploying on turn two is filth, right? Just actual filth. Um, this guy's crazy. Uh, the last three drop we play is Punishing One. This could change. This is probably one of the least important cards in the deck, but it's just a 3-4 ship that's just really, really strong. So, like, yeah, we like it. Uh, four drops, we just play three copies of Asajj Ventress. Um, this card is... Absolutely ridiculous. So it's a four cost, two four, four separatist Sith. Exploit two, on attack, if you've attacked with another separatist unit this phase, this unit gains plus three, plus oh for this phase. So this card is crazy because it exploits in um, and you can ECL in uh, and it'll swing for five. So firstly, this answers Sabine. Secondly, you can exploit your super laser technician um, to uh, ramp it immediately. So you're now safe um, from basically getting cucked out of your ramping from this card. We have a Confederate Courier um, to give you back a droid token. Um, just does everything you want. This card is crazy. And one of the major reasons this deck um, got such a power boost. The second reason this deck got a crazy power boost is uh, Maul. Forgive me, I only have two at the moment. Uh, I have not yet got my third, um, but this is a proxy. Uh, the proxy's upside down card. Uh, so yeah, uh, Maul is a five cost uh, red black, uh, five six force and Sith traded, and it can attack two units instead of one. Um, so this gives you that board stabilizing that we just needed in this deck. Um, and it just, it's so crazy. Like if he two for ones and he lives, like dude, the value is ridiculous. The fact this card can three for one um, is, is just filthy. It demands an answer. Um, and again, these are all force traded, like these are force traded units, so they're going to apply loads of pressure thanks to your force or your force lightning. Um, just absolutely nuts cards, like so, so strong. Uh, the only basic issue at the moment is like we're not really turning on Bo-Katan outside of droid tokens, that's kind of it. Um, the other five drop we play um, is three copies of Barrage, the, um, like obviously. Okay, so now let's get to what you're actually here for. This is the early game. What is our payoff? Our payoff is we get to play Palps Return with the best consistency in the game. Um, and that is because every single one of these top end cards, which we will reveal shortly, um, gets brought back for six. Well, okay, all but one. Um, and that means that you have stupid value, absolutely stupid value. Um, so we're going to go through the top end and I'm kind of going to explain why all of it's here. Um, and yeah. So uh, I'm on two copies of Kylo. So Kylo's here because you can ECL him in and he one shots a Boba. And that's basically the reason. So against Boba Fett decks, you are just, you're probably mulling for Kylo. Uh, well, not mull you're mulling for Curve and you're hoping for Kylo. Um, in time, you're hoping to match um, their flip um, by ramping. So, uh, in so basically into Boba Green, it's not going to happen. But into any other Boba, um, you can ramp. So you're on six when they're on five and you can ECL in a Kylo the second they do it. That's the hope. 
Um, obviously, it doesn't happen every single time, but um, like when you get it off, he comes in as an 8-7, so he's going to one-shot basically anything. So that's why we're on Kaime. Uh, one Maul and three Vader. Um, I think Vader is better in this deck, um, and I couldn't... Re I think like you could go up to two Maul if we cut um, the last card. Um, but yeah, I think it's just like balancing the amount of top end is, is the only challenging part. But this card is ridiculous. You can see we don't have any Underworld, so he is... He's a lot weaker in this deck because we're not turning him on. Again, Bo-Katan could change something else, but I have found that I've got the droid tokens reasonably consistently, so it's felt pretty good. But yeah, um, yeah. So and Vader's crazy. Like we, we know this card's crazy. Uh, two copies of a new toy, uh, Dooku. My God, this card is insane in this deck. So this is a six-six um, four separatist Sith. Uh, exploit two, overwhelm when played. For each unit you exploited while playing this card, you may deal damage to an enemy unit equal to the power of the exploited unit. So this is incredibly synergistic with Kylo because you can discard a card to buff power and then exploit this card out. So one of the really powerful play patterns you can do is go um, turn one, play a unit, turn two, play a unit, turn three, Kylo ability, buff your unit, swing, swing, exploit the ball, exploit both of them, slam Dooku for four, and board wipe your opponent. Um, with, and then like you deploy Kylo, and you like do all your stuff. So you can burn a lot of actions, waiting for your opponent to kind of just like, you know, reveal what they're doing, and then go from there. I You're even to the point you're happy exploiting your leader to get this card out sometimes, because it just turns into a board wipe. That's how powerful it is. Um, so yeah, I'm, I, I think this card's crazy. Um, you just... I, I might play three, right? Like, I, I, I want to test it more and see maybe I do want three. Like, maybe I don't actually care about the more. Maybe, like, the more can just be a Dooku. And this last card here is Gore. Um, it's just a fun one, right? Like, it's it's a six cost um, when you exploit three. It's a seven, seven, Sentinel, Ambush, Overwhelm. It just does a lot. Um, but you might not need Gore, honestly. I kind of just wanted to play one because it's fun. Uh, but, yeah, I, I could... I think you would be totally justified in going three Kylo, three Vader, three Dooku, and that would be fine. Um, I, I wouldn't want to play less top end than that because like, we really do need to see at least one to discard so then we can start pouts returning. Like Your goal, your game plan is basically turn one, play a unit, turn two, play something that ramps you, um, and then if you can that turn, trigger it. So if you SLT and then you want to go into a Sarge that turn. Um, if you don't, uh, or obviously if you resupply, then you immediately flip and swing. The next turn, ECL in either a maul or do a barrage or some sort of big like play. Um, make sure on, on one of those previous turns you have discarded one of your top end units. Um, and the turn after that, you pounce return, and then you just like apply pressure. You just go as hard as you can. Kylo's probably not lived this long, but now you can buff your units and just really drive in as much pressure as possible. Um, you kind of need to force your opponent to have outs in this deck. You can't just sit there and go, oh, what if they have removal? If they have removal, they have removal. You need to hope that they don't have removal, and you are applying more than enough pressure um, to just have them be sitting there like, okay, I'm taking a lot of damage here. Um, I think this deck is super fun. Um, I, I, I have, I doubt it's super meta, uh, but I think it's really, really cool. Um, in terms of the sideboard, this is just what I've got at the moment um, for various matchups. So I've got uh, two Confederate Tri Fighter um, into blue, uh, three copies of uh, Zeman Fang Fighter for decks that play upgrades, three copies of uh, Ruthless Raider uh, for decks that are weak to space. And two copies of Crate Dragon, um, if you think the game is going to go that long, and you just need a bomb that will uh, potentially get you there against those uh, late-game decks. So there we go. That's it. That's the deck profile. Um, let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. Please do give this deck a crack. I think you will enjoy it. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget to enter my giveaway, which is uh, linked in the description um, or in the previous video. Um, so check that out for a starter deck. Um, it is for one of these. So if you want to win this, enter that giveaway. This video should be coming out before that closes, so uh, keep an eye out there. Um, but that's it. Thanks for watching. See you guys in the next one. Cheers.